Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again, and I've got a a very important video and this knowledge in here and the thing that I want to show you is something that I think every dentist ought to know some orthodontics, know what can be done. I don't care whether you want to do it or not do it. Uh, that's immaterial. But you need to know what can be done and what should be done to mix with dentistry uh, so that you do the proper thing. And I attended two, well, I attended one lecture and got a first-hand example of the other one, and I heard the people in this uh, video several times, and I want to show you what a glaring examples of lecturers not knowing simple orthodontic things and what ridiculous things they were teaching people. Uh, it just uh, bothers me that this knowledge is not out there and they're not trying to uh, share it with people. I'm, I'm allergic to everything in the world and this morning I'll probably be blowing my nose and and uh, wiping it and everything. But I want to get this message across. Uh, so I have this, uh, I call her a young lady, she's in her 30s and she's uh, got a closed bite, kind of a class 2 uh, it's not exactly, a, well, it is a class 2, division 2 type case, and a very deep bite. I mean, her lower, her lower front teeth are right up against the tissue. I've got a picture of the model, and that's the only way you could get them, I guess. <clears throat> so, anyway, let's uh, move on. It's going to take a while to do this, but it's worth your time if you're uh, trying to learn some orthodontics, really, uh, to uh, stick with me on this case. Uh, okay, uh, here she is, a, a lovely uh, young lady, you know, a very nice uh, person, too. But she's got a temporomandibular joint problem, and she's got this deep, deep bite. Now, um her lower anterior teeth, I'll show you in a minute. I mean, they come up and touch touch the gum tissue behind the upper anterior teeth. So the jaw is trapped back there. She has to get back here to eat or do anything. And that causes the condyle back here to be pushed into the retrodiscal tissue where the synovial fluid is formed. And as best I can tell it, this is a very vascular area back there. And it, the synovial fluid has to feed the disc or the tissue that goes over the condyle. It doesn't have any blood supply or doesn't have any nerves in it. It has to get fed by this synovial fluid being pressed into it. It's complicated as all get out. You can write books on it and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But it is a very sensitive area. And most of these cases that have trouble with it, if you just free up these teeth down here, get them out of the way, the jaw can come forward. So these two lecturers at least knew what was necessary to do. They were going to bring the jaw forward, which would bring the condyle forward and get it off of the retrodiscal tissue and stop. Uh, you know, this is causing it not to get the blood supply it needs to produce this synovial fluid, which feeds and carries out the waste product and like kidneys or something. It's complicated as all get out, you know, for it to function right. And this tissue in my joints, I have a little trouble, but 
it is still there. I mean, my jaw, I can open and close it good, and and I chew all kinds of things. Maybe a lot of it I shouldn't chew. But anyway, uh, I want to talk about that today, and there's a lot to learn in this uh, this little video right here about this case. All right, so the jaw is back, and it's slightly class two-ish. Uh, I'll show you both sides. Well, we'll look at the model after uh, a while here, and the class two, division two, with these teeth leaning back, and the lower jaw has to stay inside of here, so it keeps the jaw back, and the condyles are pressing against the retrodiscal tissue and kind of cutting the blood supply down on it so the tissue cannot uh, make the synovial fluid that it needs to make and carry out the function that it is supposed to do and so they're having trouble and all these people in and the, these people were lecturing on had the same problem and if you free the jaw up and get it out, get the condyle away from this retrodiscal tissue so the blood supply can uh, produce this anovial fluid and take care and feed the disc and the uh, jaw joint itself, uh, then things seem to get along pretty good. And so that's the situation. Now, uh, TMJ problem are not just that, it's, it has a lot to do with stress and and problems that people have in life. Everybody's got problems. If you if you live, you're going to have problems. I about decided, and nobody is free of them. People are made to function with some problems, but taking care of this disc back here. I mean the synovial fluid is an important thing in in dentistry all right here's this these teeth are are closed back holding the jaw back and let me get this thing going here i've got my little dot messed up here and uh, now we can move the lower anterior teeth are, have over erupted and are up into the uh, right behind the uh, upper anterior teeth and they are up against the tissue. I'll show you that in, a, in a, just a minute here uh, with this. And there's a lot of just regular orthodontic things. This is That's no problem, but uh, the TMJ thing is. Now, we went in and we put intruding wires and we opened this bite and that's we've covered so many times in this uh, in these lectures so I didn't I'm not trying to cover that uh, all today and we used a little class two elastics you see and so we brought the lower jaw forward but if you free the jaw up it'll just come forward and there's not too much problem with class two correction uh, on a class two division two or closed bite. You open the bite and the thing will, the jaw will just move out a great deal of that distance. I even had one one time, I've mentioned that before, that actually went from a class two class, class one, and I had to put some class three elastics to finish the case out, you see. All right, so this, this, we open the bite and move that out. And now it's in a class one relation. Now we've got the teeth, the torque changes on them as you open them up and torques it out and it makes some freedom in here and your lower front teeth or your whole lower jaw can move forward into that space and these two gentlemen knew that and at least understood that and i don't want to uh, embarrass 
I'm not trying to embarrass them. They were taught this. They were not taught any orthodontics, which is a ridiculous, stupid thing. We all, all, every dentist should know what can be done and what is done in orthodontics. And uh, I don't want to leave this earth without getting that across to uh, the dental society totally. It's ridiculous that we don't teach everybody some orthodontics. That's my uh, own opinion, but I really believe that. Now, here the lower, we've straightened it all up. We've opened it up, straightened everything up, and here it is finished out. We put it in a retainer that will allow the teeth to erupt together. And by the way, we put the uh, brackets right down on the gum line on adults. And you saw we used plastic brackets, or not plastic, but ceramic uh, brackets on those uh, other, the upper teeth. It covered it up a little bit. Now I'm going to go uh, and get into the, uh, now this is a retainer and it's got a little bite plate here and she'll need to wear this for years and that keeps the bite from deepening. You open it up and then get them comfortable and get the jaw in a good position and it gets the condyles off the retrodiscal tissue and you hold it that way. And they use these retainers for years and years after you get through with them. And these retainers allow these teeth to erupt into each other and, and wear down in there just like a bunch of valves in an uh, engine almost. Uh, and this is lined up. It's not perfect, but it's out there where it doesn't bother, and that stops the deal from uh, bothering them. Now, look where these bottom teeth are. I mean, they're right up against the tissue. I guess the tissue and the teeth just grew into each other. They were chewing more or less into that. Now, you got to bring these down and then bring the upper, the anterior upper teeth up out here. When you do that, your jaw can move forward, and when you move the jaw forward, you move the condyles forward and get them off of the retrodiscal tissue and allow the blood supply to that tissue to produce the synovial fluid that is necessary for the operation of this joint we've got up here, which is complicated as all get out, and but that helps it and that solves so many of the orthodontic TMJ problems that people have. And here this, uh, the teeth were down like this, and now they're up this way. And that freed them up, and they came forward, and we pulled it forward on a little bit, but not much. Most of it, the jaw just moves out. You see this cuspid it's going to be here this point will go there this one here this uh bottom uh seems like i don't know whether that's a this is just anyway it's going to bring uh this molar will move out to where it's something like this you see and so this whole jaw now this wisdom tooth drop down here and it hits in that area but it and any way they move their jaw, it doesn't bother anything, but it's going to need to go in there to get it out, and it'll come back, and you'll watch at the end of it. It will be like that. Now, here in the retainer, you see we've got it in a class one relation, and the jaw is in a comfortable position, and the condyle is not pressing on this highly vascular area where the synovial fluid is made. And so the, she's not having any 
uh, TMJ problem with it. You did it orthodontically, you can do, do this. And these two gentlemen knew this. Now, here's what one of the gentlemen did. Now, I did not see this, but I had a gentleman in my uh, lecture that was sitting in this class when the lady came into the uh, the guy's office where it was in Alabama or somewhere, and she had been in pain for years. And this fella, knowing that he needed to move the jaw forward and these teeth were in the way, it, it, the man that was... That, was in this lecture and then was later in in my lecture uh said he deadened these teeth and ground them off and did root canals on them i mean and the, sent the lady back to the hotel she was from ohio or somewhere was way down there had heard about him and she he was there that morning when she came back in and she hugged the guy's neck, said that was the first night she had slept good in I don't know how long. Now, wouldn't it be a lot nicer if that man had been taught a little orthodontics? He could have put a dead gum intruding wire up here and pull, pick those teeth up. And I've got several cases that we shown back there where I had this lady was hurting and moving it out. Just put that on there in a week or two or three. It has the teeth out of the way and the jaw can come out and you don't have the pain and you don't grind the cotton picking teeth off and ruin them and have to have crowns put on them that are uh, fitting these roots that are left there. If you straighten this out, the root goes in the correct place. So that is... Uh, ridiculous now the other guy I went all the way to New York to hear this guy and he showed a case with a deep bite case and he knew he had to bring the jaw forward now his deep bite allowed him to bring the jaw out here so he moved the jaw out to where this was underneath there and got it far enough out there wasn't hurting at all now, these teeth would not be in contact. He'd have a gap between the teeth. And so, instead of intruding the teeth, which he should have done and in intruding these teeth down here on the bottom, he crowned all of these teeth right here. And I was sitting back there in the lecture, and I could hardly keep from getting up and say, Man, why don't you learn a little orthodontics? Now, granted, he could do this quick. And if the person uh, would have these top hat crowns on them, I mean, you got a more crown to root ratio down here, and the tooth is going to be less stable through life. And you open the bite completely, we can intrude the teeth and not increase this vertical height of the face in here. So why don't we teach everybody some orthodontics? What can be done with it? Then people would know this. Here these guys were lecturing all over the United States, teaching people to do this ridiculous thing. Then that bothers me. That really bothers me. And I, it, I've been harping on this for years and get very little result. The pediatric dentist should be doing orthodontics, every one of them, and they are not. There's a lot of good pediatric dentists that are. And I know a lot of good orthodontists that have helped me through the years and even heads of departments. And I've even taught with uh, several of these and taught with uh, Dr. Larry White and, and uh, uh, 
other heads of departments and there's a lot of good people out there why don't we get together and start teaching everybody some orthodontics i don't care if you don't go into detail that we go into in here but they ought to know that these teeth can be intruded you don't have to grind the things off in there and that ought to be done and you can intrude them and you don't have to crown the whole mouth to treat the tooth level the arches out and so that's the message that i'd like to leave in this video and i hate to uh, get all uh, <laughs> whatever you want to call it but it it bugs the heck out of me that we will not and i've been harping on this stuff for years but it's just in lectures now we got it in videos and it's going all over the world i guess i don't know where it goes but you can level it all out and if the jaw come forward it does away with the jaw joint problem and it fits the teeth are going to erupt together in here and this is the best way to do it and this is the best type of retainer these little shell things uh, and the teeth can never get there and if you run a bunch of wire under here just to keep the blooming retainer in you do not need them this will stay in it like it wants to and here's this side over here we move this jaw forward that cuspid comes down in that spot right there move these teeth at way out here move these down and brought them together out here in front now I'm going to show you some x-rays we took on the, this case. Here it is, brought out like that. And there it is. And this is type of retainer. You put a bite plate on it and let them bite in and leave a, a track where the teeth meet in there. And that keeps the bite from deepening again. And they should wear that for years because... It takes a long time before when you open the bite you uh, dentally you're going to open it a little bit skeletally and it's going to try to close back but this keeps it from closing down that and so they need to wear that especially if they've got TMJ problems all right and then we put a little three to three on the bottom uh, arch like that now this uh, self, the uh, drawing, really the lower anterior teeth are up higher uh, down here. You can see the uh, track of, let me erase that. You see that, uh, see that tooth coming up, up right up in there. It actually comes up here somewhere. And now, if you grind this off and then put the crown then recrown the blooming thing the crown's going to be out like this and the roots going to be here if you straighten it out the root will go back in you see and it'll be out in the right position so and if you come in here and you open the bite where you can bring this down and you got a, a it looks like a quarter of an inch in there, but it's not that much. Then you've got a big distance in here. Then you've got to put these crowns way up high, and it gives you a big crown to root ratio. And the higher up you get, the more force it puts on the bone structure down here. And that's bad. It's correct if they would intrude these and intrude these slide the jaw forward and then you have correct the jaw joint problem so now this is a little complicated orthodontics for just everybody to do and you don't have to worry about people doing the complicated stuff i mean they're not going to get in there 
Now, we took transcranial x-rays, and you would bite two in one and relax in the other, and you'd see the space around the head of the condyle. There's the condyle. Now, when they open the mouth, the condyle goes way out here. And I want to uh, illustrate some of this. Now, when you bite on one side of your mouth, one condyle stays in the socket, and the other one shifts out of the socket and goes down the eminence. In other words, and now when I bite over here and I chew, these teeth don't touch. Now, if I slide my jaw forward, both condyles move out here like this and this. In other words, they were here. Now they're here. And now you can bite your front teeth together and cut something off and the back teeth don't hit. And that's the way it ought to be. That's the way God made us, you know. And uh, that's the way it, it, it is. If you choose on the side, the other doesn't. That's the occlusion you need. You don't need all this dead gum equipment that some of these people have. I've been doing TMJ stuff for 30 years. And we took everybody that came in. And I don't know a single person that we didn't help them get rid of the pain. We can't stop the the, uh, the uh, popping. Uh, sometimes the disc is from. And, it, and you can go and uh, work the last 12 years in Dr. Mike Horley's office in Hearst. And you can go... In there, and and he's probably still got a bunch of the records if you want to look at them. Uh, so you can do this, and I wanted to pass this on. Now here we have finished out. Now that's a whale of a impaction up here, and it definitely needs to go, or be taken out of that position. This one's hanging over; it's not bothering much. But it's pretty simple to take it out. This one would be a little little bit of a, a challenge up there to get that one. But the, we took those out and, and cleared this whole thing up. And this lady is 38 years old uh, at the time. Uh, I guess this is 1988. Uh, must have been. A, that's the first panoramic. Panorex we've got. Here's a, the second one. This is 1288. Uh, and we've got the appliance on there. And we were going and had the wisdom teeth removed. And here it is. Uh, she's age, still age 48 and 1. And this is 90, 91. I don't know about our time working out here. Here she is a little later. And we have finished her, and we opened her bite dentally and did not open it skeletally. We know how to use those blocks, and you can do that too. And so could these lecturers that did not know, I don't guess they even knew that you could do that. And that is so ridiculous. I mean, they've been denied this knowledge in dental school. They were not taught anything. You, you don't have to teach them how to do it all, but teach them what can be done so people will do it or get somebody else to do it. And here she is in 95, and it's still working. I've got a little composite here, and that holds the retainer wire right down here on this part. You can put that wire exactly where you want it if you want to, the labial wire. And there's class one. It's still in class one. And that's the little three to three we had on the bottom. Okay. I hope that there's uh, people that are uh, concerned about things like this and that... Uh, People will eventually change and start teaching orthodontics to every dental student. 
you don't have to show them exactly how to do it and all that, but show them what can be done. And that doesn't take a lot of effort to show them what can be done. Uh, I hope a lot of them will uh, look at some of these videos if they don't get taught in the class. Uh, we'll try to teach them. I tried to get the guys at, at uh, my university to teach orthodontics. They said, we are not going to do it. And I told the guy, I said, okay, you're not going to do it, but I am. And that's I dedicated my work and everything to teaching people orthodontics. And I hope you uh, join us. And I uh, would love to have you as, uh, as one of our subscribers. So I'm going to hush and hope you get something from this uh, lecture. And I hope uh, these two lectures, I'm sure I know one of them is passed on and probably the other one. I've outlived all these people. Uh, but uh, to my knowledge, they hadn't learned a lot of this when they... When I quit listening to them. All right, we'll say goodbye, and I'm going to run this over and cut this off. Thank you for watching. Bye.